I say reminder word because the Lord has already said certain things to us in his word some of which we have been reminded of here but we have to keep hearing it because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God Paul speaking he said for me to say a thing to you twice is not grievous it doesn't bother me however for you it is safe you actually need to hear it again and again and so we can't be tired of hearing God's word you see and I say reminder word also because the Holy Spirit doesn't speak anything of his own he only speaks that which Jesus has said he speaks and reveals only the mind of the Father and so I want you to take every word that is being shared with us today as inspired by the Holy Spirit for you to be well reminded of who you are and whose you are why don't you join me in welcoming Dr. John everybody praise the Lord and the band you may be seated God bless you thank you amen thank you pastor amen I shared in the men's group the other day, and Pastor said, can you share like 15, 20 minutes of what you shared? Uh, God really showed me something from last Saturday. I thought on Monday, if we do a men's prayer thing on Monday, um, teaching, and I thought I was going to teach about one thing. I literally wrote entire notes, and God was like, I've listened to uh, Saturday's sermon like three times now, maybe three and a half times, I don't know. And... Um, I was, you know, I put it on in the car when I'm driving because I'm always driving to like Buckhead from Dawsonville to Buckhead and back and it's a long drive. So I'm always listening to the sermon and I heard something pastor said and I actually, I took a video the other day on Saturday and I put it in the, uh, if you watched it in the chat, I, I put it down from like six minutes down to like a minute and 20 or something like that. Uh, I trimmed it down and he said something and it really hit me and I listened to it, I listened to the recording, I don't know, like 10 times that little clip and he really just stirred up something within me. And he said something. He said, uh, God's already done it. And that really hit me. And all these things he's been saying, you know, uh, I don't know, like four years worth of stuff just started coming to me. And, you know, a lot of scriptures and all this stuff just started coming to me. And that's what on Monday it just all kind of like just came out. It's like the Spirit of God is speaking. And since that, I've been dreaming like really crazy stuff. God's been showing me like all kinds of stuff. Even about somebody here, God showed me somebody popped up in a dream. I was like, that's what God showed me. Uh, and, you know, God's already done it was the, you know, the word he gave me. And if we look throughout scripture, you know, if we look at Adam in the Bible, you know, he said, I have already given you. And then if you go over next, if you look at even Moses in the Bible, he says, I've already given you. If you look at Joshua, and Joshua, I believe it's chapter one, verse eight, he said, I've already given you Jericho. Like this is before anything's ever happened. If you look at Abraham, he already gave him, go back and like read this stuff. It's really interesting. I was talking to my wife about it. And um, I was says, interesting, God already, you good, thanks. Um, but God already gave him. And we, we, you know, it's interesting. When we try to do stuff ourselves, I like using Abraham as an example. Abraham, God already gave him a son in the future. You know, he gave him a son. But he said, I'm going to do it my own. And he said, you know, I'm going to go use the concubine and I'm going to make her my own and, you know, I have a son. And look at all the issues that happened when he tried to make it his own. You know, look even today, even to today, generation after generation after generation, what happened because he did it his own. And God was showing me this. He said, you know, I've already done everything. Where's your faith at? And, you know, a lot of times with our finances, if you look at finances, we're like, God, um, you know, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. You know, when you see all the bills coming out and everything, you know, you're like, God's like, I've already got you, man. I, I mean, a, a fish come out of the ocean and a coin was in his mouth. Why are you worried? You know, you worried about Visa calling you and people calling you, but I, I got you. Where's your faith at? And then we're worried, we're like, we're sick. You know, I deal with a lot of sick people all the time. They're coming to me on, um, you know, either mental health or something's going on. And um, it's interesting, you know, a lot of people run to the doctor before, you know, and it's okay, you know, they're paying me, but it, it's, I'm like, especially if somebody's a believer, I'm like, have you prayed about it? And if I know they're a believer, I'll ask them that. I'll be like, have you prayed about it at all? 
And I got a new client, she's got all these heart issues and she was telling me, she's like, oh no, I haven't prayed about it. I'm like, so why did you come see me before you prayed? I asked her that today. I said, why did you come see me before you prayed? I know you're a believer, you go to church every week. I'm like, why are you seeing me before you pray? And she's like, I don't know. I just like, I call you first. And I'm like, I told her, I was like, you need to call God first. And <laughs> I said, I'm happy to have you here. And you know, you're paying me good money, but you know, you don't even need me. God's already given you the healing. And, you know, I was guilty of that one time when I was, when I was not feeling well one time, I remember I was really fast to run a Tylenol, you know, and I was like, oh, I like Tylenol. And the issue with that is, is it doesn't require a lot of faith to take a Tylenol. It requires more faith to pray, get on your knees and pray and go, God, I know I'm not feeling well. You know I'm not feeling well, but I give this to you. And we got to come into alignment with God. That's our big thing. You know, Pastor talked about this on Men's Monday call, is we, we got to come into alignment with God. You know, it's, it's, God's already done it. In, I had some verses that I shared here was, you know, in 1 Peter, in uh, Peter 1, 2 Peter 1, 3, it says, according to his divine power hath given you all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. You know, you know, and I, one of the things I say is, you know, we're, we're, a lot of us are going meeting to meeting and we're going, you know, let me find the next best thing. And let me ask this person for advice. And if I had a dollar for every believer that came in my office asking for help and I'm like, and nobody's prayed, like nobody, it would shock you. Um, literally, I see like, I think last week I logged like 60 people came to me, like 60, I don't know, 62, somewhere around there. Probably half of them say they're believers. And most of them don't pray. So it's alarming, you know, we gotta get into alignment with God. We say we believe in God, but the reality is we're not in alignment with God because God already said, I've already done it. And it says in Ephesians 1, 3, hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, meaning it's already done. So, you know, God really showed me, I, I, I listened to the Saturday's message several times and I was getting all these nuggets, it was just coming but it was through repetition. I didn't get much. The first time I sat in here, I was like, okay, that's good, you know, it's powerful. But when I listened in the car a second time, I was like, hold up, let me rewind that. And I, rem I rewound one thing like 10 times. I was like, am I hearing that right? And if you replay it and replay it, because it says meditate on God's word day and night, not read it one time. And you know, I've been going through the book of Genesis recently, again, and I've read through the Bible, but I was going through Genesis and I was like, wait a second. I didn't realize God said he already did that for Abraham. I didn't realize he said he did that for Adam. I didn't realize he said he did that for, for Noah and Moses and all these people, like Joshua and all these people. And I'm like, it's not like I'm going to do. It's like, I've already done it. He's already given you everything. And God, God did that, you know, and I was sharing that with my wife because my wife was feeling a little bit sad the other day because she's like, oh, I miss China because Chinese New Year came and all this stuff. She was feeling a little bit down. And um, I shared her, I was like, you know, God already gave you joy. He already gave you peace. He already gave you everything. And I was like, you just got to get in alignment. And I was like, let me pray with you. So I started praying with her and her whole mood changed. And she started feeling, and I was like, see, there you go. The problem is a lot of us in our spiritual walk sometime, God isn't our go-to. It's Tylenol. It's the therapist. It's our friend on the phone. It's Netflix, Whatever. And that's our go-to is our like, oh, I feel bad. Let me, drink, let me drink something or have some ice cream or smoke something or whatever. I just feel bad. Let me have some me time. And God's like, I already gave you everything. He's like, I already healed you. I already took care of your kid. I've already blessed your finances. And Pastor said something really powerful the other day. He said, you know, he said, God promised you a house. You rent in your house and you're like, God, I know you promised me. I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to be a slave to the lender. You're going to give me a house. But, you know, the interest rate's high, so I'm just going to wait. And Pastor said, he's like, you think God, you know, God can do anything. He's waiting on an interest rate? Come on. No. And that, that hit me too is, is, you know, he's already done it. It's when you come into alignment with God, you know, I, I remember, you know, uh, a couple years ago, I was really struggling financially. I think I had like 35,000 in credit card debt and all this stuff. And um, I was struggling financially. This is three, four years ago. And... Um, it really, the financial stuff really hit me. I was just, God, God showed me a few things and I started getting checks in the mail. Like seriously, like they were like, oh, you overpaid on your car. Oh, we'll pay you more money if you sell your car. And I was like, what? And they were like, 
uh, you overpaid on your AC unit. And I was like, but my insurance company, and then my insurance company, I was like, my insurance company paid for that. And they're like, no, nah, your insurance company paid too much. You get a refund. I'm like, what? I never heard of that before. And then they're like, oh, like recently, listen, my phone company contacted me and said, you've paid too much the last two years on your phone. We were actually cheating you $53 a month. We want to give you a credit for that. T-Mobile called me. How often does that happen? Never happens. They called me and said, yeah, you paid the last two years too much, $53 too much on your phone. We realized you were overpaying because you had the Apple Care and the 360 Care, and you were paying for both. So we're going to give you a $53 credit for each month for the last two years. And I was like, thank you, God, for that gift. I said, I said it's kind of funny. God said, you know, you know, give this person $20, give this person $50, and I just give, you know, take them to lunch and do that a lot. And, you know, buy this person coffee or something. And, you know, God always returns it. And I see that because God goes, I already got you. Stop stressing about this. Stop stressing about that. And, you know, like Pastor was saying about the house thing, but it came about getting in alignment with God. So, you know, the other day I've been, I've been, one of my clients, I can't go into much detail about it, but one of my clients has really been, she's 14, she's really been struggling. And uh, she's about to go homeless and all this stuff. And I have to go to court on court for it and all this stuff. And uh, it's heartbreaking. And I got on my knees and I prayed to God. I was like, God, I give this girl to you. She doesn't know you. She's wild. I don't look like her. I'm not the same gender as her. I don't come from the same background as her at all. But I give her to you. And you know what? Everything today started falling into place for her. Do, 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 do. And I was getting calls. It's like, hey, your stuff was approved. This was approved. This was approved. This was approved. And I was like, I said, I didn't even, I, all I did, like, I didn't even do much. I was like, I just prayed to God. And they're like, oh, did you send an email? I was like, I didn't send an email, nothing. I would just be, you know. And they're like, and it was like miracle after miracle after miracle. And I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, I couldn't do that. It, it was God, but God already had me. And that, that was the, you know, God's given me so much revelation, you know, He's already forgiven us. He's already provided for us. He's already done everything. You know, if one of the things I, I said on here is, you know, if it's kind of like this and a lot of people go, I can't believe it. I really got pain. I'll give you some examples. You got, I really got pain. I can't believe that my healing is on the way. My blessings are on the way. My finances are on the way. I only make $20 an hour, John. I don't think that. It's kind of like when you turn on your TV and you know the TV signals are going to be there, but you can't see them, but you know they're going to be there. If you got faith in that, it's kind of the same way with God. You know, even though you can't see it and you can't feel it, and touch it, none of that stuff, you know it's going to be there. So I encourage you today, you know, God, God just been, he's been showing me so much about like, you know, I've been, a lot of the prayers have been happening at 3 a.m. on my knees. And, you know, when everybody else is sleeping in the house, I get on my knees and I pray and I'm like, God, I give this person to you. I give this person to you. I give this person to you. I would say probably half the people in here, I've literally prayed for you on my knees. And I was like, I don't really know them that well, but I give them to you because I see they're struggling. I can feel it. So God already said, I already got them. If I know the hairs that are on their head and the bird fell from the sky, I know that bird. How much do I care for them? I died for them just as much as I died for you as I died for you as I died for you. And, you know, like I got a lot of this revelation now. I would encourage you to go back and listen to the teachings because it didn't happen. Yes, it, I got a lot of revelation when I was sitting here, but when I went back and was like, okay, let me meditate on that. And let me meditate on it again. And instead of listening to the, you know, the rap music in the car, I turned that down and I put on the communion house stuff. And I was like, let's start my morning off with some, you know, Saturday teaching. And that's what I did. Literally, I was driving this morning. I was like, play. And, um, you know, God started speaking to me so much. And that was it. He, what I wanted to say was no matter what you're struggling with today, he's already done it. Amen. Let's celebrate our dear brother, John. <laughs> Hallelujah. I give God praise. I, um, the man of God reached out to me last night and uh, said, I want you to share a couple of updates. And so as the Lord leads, we will do just that. I thank God because as the man of God came up here, Brother John, he shared with us a 
reason to give glory to God, the testimonies that have been coming forth. One thing I shared with us earlier today was this past weekend, how we had such or encountered such a tangible presence of God and healing went forth. And we were seeing that healing in our bodies. You see, many of these things that we have been waiting on from the Lord, the Lord is gonna see fit for us to experience them this season. And we give God praise because we know that in, hallelujah, we know that in this time of waiting, the scriptures say in Deuteronomy 8, I brought you all this place in the wilderness to test you, to see what was in your hearts. This has been by his doing, by his divine orchestration that we experience what we have experienced to build us up for this time. Many of us have asked for strength, the ability to press in, to see visions, to encounter the Lord in ways that we have seen the ones that have come before us and the Lord has presented to us many an opportunity to press in, to pray as the man of God ministered, the grace to pray. And so there are just a couple of things here that we're gonna get into in scripture. I'm gonna share a couple of dreams that I had and we're gonna get into prayer. Um, at that time, we'll stand and just talk to God in the Holy Ghost. You know how we do around here. I wanna start with this. A few days ago, um, actually, let's do this. Isaiah chapter seven, verse 15. It has been a scripture that we have been declaring over ourselves and especially our children. It reads, curds and honey he shall eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Family, a few days ago, and this is reason to rejoice, we know we've been pressing in concerning our children. And um, I went to sleep and woke up in a schoolhouse and I saw children going to and fro, and there was a young child, maybe about the age of 10 or so, and as the child came to eat, it was lunchtime at the schoolhouse. The child had brought up his plate. They were hungry, they were ready to eat, and this particular schoolhouse was, uh, in the vision, a, a well-endowed school. It was in a good neighborhood, it was an affluent neighborhood. We knew that they had the best teachers, they had the best resources for the children there, and the children were going to and fro happy. But when lunchtime came, the child saw how the ones that were the leaders of the school served the food. Now the children had all types of delicacies. I'm talking sushi, wings, fried rice, all types of foods that uh, any of us would desire at any spread. But when the child saw, I stood from a distance watching the child come up to be served. And the child said, uh, I don't think we should be eating that. And um, when I looked at how the one who was serving was preparing the food, the food looked good, but it was drenched in fat, in grease. And you couldn't tell based off how it was prepared because you just would have saw it on the spread first, but the child was able to discern where the food was coming from. Now, I want to encourage us with this. Now, this is uh, a testimony because we have been pressing in so much concerning our children and now the Lord is revealing to us our children responding real time in these scenarios these things that we have been declaring over our children look we serve a good God a posture that the Lord has had me in as of late is reminding him like Lord I know you're a good daddy if I ask for you for fish you're not gonna give me a serpent because you're a good father the scripture reads in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verses 8 through 9 it reads but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself watch this verse 9 reads now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs this is a season of now for our children, this favor because we have declared, we have prayed over God, or prayed over our children, requesting from God an increase in their discernment that our children be discerning as they go to and fro because we know as parents, we're not gonna be around them all the time, okay? And it's only by the Holy Ghost that they're gonna be able to be led. Now that's one of our prayer points. The scriptures read 
in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 15 and at the end of the 10 days their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. We give God praise. Now this is uh, this particular prayer point will be a time of rejoicing for what the Lord has revealed to us concerning um, what he's doing in our children's lives. Hallelujah. I want to share with us one more thing as again we're building up these prayer points. We're going to spend time really uh, press again, tarrying before his presence. The book of Isaiah, let's start here first. So this was just this past week now. Uh, what I'm sharing is uh, these requests are actually blended. And what I mean by that is this season, as we have been petitioning the Lord concerning our children, we have also been requesting for the power of God to see his power in operation in our midst because we know we thank God for the Holy Spirit that he's brought us to this place believing on the Lord but we know many of us need to see the power many of those that are out there need to see it to come into this house and even for ourselves we want to experience what the Lord Jesus did here in the earth moving in the signs and wonders because it's what the word declares now this was just yesterday my wife and I had been just spending time praying uh, as we have been instructed by the man and woman of God of this house in uh, tearing before the Lord concerning our children and requesting, Lord, how much longer before we begin to experience the fullness of you, these signs and wonders to follow us. And what's funny is my wife and I were working out. We uh, work out several times a week and um, we were... Uh, probably about halfway through the workout and as I'm dropping the dumbbell immediately I go into a vision to where I see a man and he's bloodied he had just been in war snot nose bleeding out of his nose he was bruised up but he had this grin on his face he was chuckling and I'm looking, Lord, what is this? And as he stood there, because I knew he had been in the heat of battle, let me pivot for a minute. Uh, I may be speaking to some of my guys and gals here. You know, in games like uh, Street Fighter, and um, there are a few others, that in order to reach that maximum level in your power or in your skill set, you have to be depleted first, you see? And so as I saw this man at this low point, what seemed like a low, low point, but his uh, demeanor was that of, of victory, of that of peace, someone that was totally sold out to war. As I saw him laying there to the untrained eye, looking defeated, suddenly there was light that appeared in his hand. And I knew, I said, Lord, this must be the power that he had been waiting on. The scriptures say in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I uh, really have to repent for how I have taken this verse for granted. Because the scriptures say, The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is, is unmatched. This is not anything to play with. And so to know that we've come to the hour of a rising shining, it has been something that has been ministered to us probably the few years that I've been here, okay? But really now grasping the magnitude in time because we've come to that season of experiencing the power of God. When the glory of God comes upon us, it's nothing to play with. And I'm so thankful that we have come to this time because many testimonies have come forth. It says here, this should get us excited. The book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 5, it reads, that you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The man of God ministered here, the privilege that we are 
uh, experience in this season that we have entered into. We got to know what it is so that we can properly appropriate it. You see, so we can be expectant and posture to receive. It says here, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. This is not by our own doing. This is by the Lord himself. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Now, what is happening around us? The book of Micah chapter five, verse six, it reads, they shall lay waste with the sword, the land of Assyria and the land of Nimrod at its entrances. Thus he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and when he treads within our borders. Now here is another prayer point. Testimonies have come forth. We know we're entering into that season of power, of just unrivaled privilege in God. But I want to encourage us in this because we must stand in this season and this is going to be one of our prayer points the book of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and I'll walk us through these again as we stand and give God praise and tap into the Holy Ghost it reads for the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God I'm drawing our attention to this sentence here it reads and the dead in Christ will rise first it says then we who are alive and remain. See, the warfare here is so fierce and many of us are falling by the wayside. The, the position that the Lord has called us to is to remain. If we want to see the Lord Jesus crack the sky, we're going to carry out, if we desire to carry out all of what the Lord has been revealing to us, if we know the season that we have been brought into, we must remain. So our prayer for this house and for our brothers and sisters worldwide is the scriptures encourage us to pray for our brothers and sisters as they're experiencing the same trials and tribulations as we are here, is that we all remain. And our encouragement here many a time from Wednesdays, the book, Wednesdays, the book of Luke chapter 21, as we remain, what we're going to do, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. It encourages us here. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carouse and drunkenness and cares of this life that, and that day come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Let's stand as we get into prayer and thanks for the many things that the Lord has revealed to us this season. Such wisdom we have operated by. Father, we give you praise. Let's begin to talk to God. And feel free to take whatever posture you need to take as I lead us through these scriptures and declarations. Father, we give you praise. There's none like you, O oh God. Father, we thank you because by your hand you have brought us all this way. You have kept us, O oh God. You have commanded your angels to take charge over us. Father, we declare and we give you thanks because the curds and honey we eat that we may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Father, we thank you that this season we do not defile ourselves. Oh God, we come out better than before. Father, we give you praise because these things are for your glory. Father, we declare according to your word in the book of Isaiah that we arise and shine for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Father, we thank you for your glory that exposes every plan of attack of the enemy, O God. We thank you for your glory, O God, even as your servant Moses petitioned you, O God, and asked of you, please show me your glory. And you hid him in the cleft of the rock, O God, and revealed to him your backside. O God, we ask of 
be again. Show us your glory. Father, we give you praise because we know by faith your glory has risen upon us and we are changed. How can we stand in your glory and not be changed? Father, we thank you for transfiguration even now. Father, we thank you that you perfect us moment after moment, day after day, month after month, year after year, oh God, until that time. That we see you. I see Karababashi in the blue skies, oh God, and we are changed forever. Sukura Babashi e Kirebosa. Father, we give you praise because we shall see that we've become radiant. And our hearts swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Father, we give you praise and we say, oh, see, see, it's time for you to be turned to us. It is time for the wealth of the Gentiles to come to us. Because your word, O oh God, declares it. For you have grace unto us to know the signs of the times by your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you and give you praise for the anointing of the sons of Issachar that rests upon this place, O oh God. The same anointing, O oh God, that rested upon your prophet Enoch. That saw things O oh God, that no man else would see. It's only by your grace, O oh God, only by your mercy that we have been able to come before you because you, O oh God, your word declares is the all-consuming fire. Father, we give you place for you lay waste the sword of the land of Assyria and the land of Nimrod. Father, we thank you that you do away with this kingdom of rebellion. Father, we give you praise for this is our hour for power. Oh God, we have waited all this time. Oh God, ride upon the clouds and see upon the, about your children. You see this one. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All glory and honor belong to you, O God. Father, we declare at this time that we will watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. And we indeed shall stand before the Son of Man. Father, we give you praise for the unction from the Holy Ghost. And we know all things. Father, we thank you for this time of prayer. How you've brought us into your presence, O oh God. All glory belong to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alan, do you have one more prayer point or that's it? Praise God. God is good. So let's be seated for like a quick couple of minutes. Praise God. Um, Y'all can see that for real, for real, we are in a season of privilege. It is a privilege to be able to pray. However, many of us have yet to recognize the things that actually opened the door for the privilege to come in. And quite often, just as I was saying a couple of days ago, that the things that trigger the seasons are not particularly the things that we like. They may be uncomfortable. Jesus says men ought always to pray and not to faint. So what that means is the things that will cause you to pray or quicken you to pray are things that also make you feel faint. You understand what I mean? So when you look at it very critically, God presents his blessings to us in his own nature. 
Because when God is coming because it's light, there are times wherein he will wrap himself in dark clouds. Just as when he came back on the Mount of Sinai. Because some people just don't recognize that if he just, I mean, we're not aware sometimes that if he just comes as the light that he is, many of us will be too blinded to even behold him. So he does us a favor by doing something that gets our attention. And so darkness always pre pre precedes the light. Always. When you look from Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says darkness was upon the face of the deep. We heard darkness before we heard light. You understand what I mean? And so when you think about it, need precedes provision. If you don't have a need and God just keeps providing, you're going to be sunken in blessings that you don't even know what to do with. You understand what I mean? And so if you just suddenly have the unction to pray, but there is no burden to lift with all that power, what is it going to do to you? It could, it could just weigh you down. It's like having so much power, but there's nothing to do with it. So God gives you work so that you can know the measure of the power that is available to you. You understand what I mean? And so when I say we are in a season of prayers, some people are like, yeah, but you keep talking about these visions of children. This is happening to them. This is going on in the world. Yes, that is the work that we need the power for. So let us learn to, let us be quick at turning things around for execution. So when you see a need, rather than wasting time complaining being sorrowful, being faint-hearted. The moment the need arises, turn it around quickly and present it to the grace of God for execution. And how do you do that? You do that in the place of prayer. So I'm glad that we prayed just as we did now because we need to continue praying like this when we get home. Maybe not like this because sometimes I was only hearing myself and Alan, okay? I'm hoping that you all know that prayer is not always silent. I know that there is a place that you get to and you start to pray with groanings that can't be uttered. But you get there sometimes on a ramp. And so to get there, some, before you get to the ramp, you need to hear yourself pray. There is something that happens when you're praying as one having authority. You understand what I mean? And so when we get home, let us pray because a lot of what we are dealing with, if we do not pray, they would deal with us. I mean, that goes without saying. We already know that. But I'm encouraging you to learn in this season to pray and apply the reminder word. Can I please have my Bible? I want to read one verse of scripture that Alan read. I just want to read it again. Isaiah chapter 60. But before then, uh, we're thankful to God for the miracles that happened here on Saturday. I mean, quite a number of people got healed here on Saturday. Praise God. Oh, yeah. And um, if any one of you wants to share a quick testimony, you're welcome to it. Just let me know. I'll call you forth. But I know that there were messages already in the WhatsApp group, people testifying of the, the goodness of God, healing that was immediate. You understand what I mean? And I'm excited because um, we've been waiting for the power. But we've been reminded that everything that we're waiting for has already been given to us. So to now see that we're moving in it is good because the word came forth on Saturday, the same Saturday, saying that to wait on God is not to wait for God. To wait on God is to do what he has said with what he has given. And then you come back and your strength is renewed. Look at Isaiah chapter 60 that we just read. And I want to draw our attention to one or two things and then we're just going to pray a little bit more and the meeting will be over. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine. And for the people that are new, our communion house will believe that this is the true order of things. Not the song that you used to sing that says, Arise and shine. You don't arise and shine. The moment you rise, you shine because you are light. You understand what I mean? You don't turn on the bulb and then tell the bulb to shine. The moment the bulb is on, this lamp, the moment it's on, it shines. The moment you light a candle, it shines. You don't light the candle 
and then wait for it to shine. No, the Bible says arise, shine. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The meaning of the glory of the Lord is risen upon you is simply you have now been activated. You have been given the power, you have been given all of what it takes and the time came for your activation. All you need to do is just rise up to the occasion and you will begin to shine. And what is the occasion? The occasion could be the need that you're experiencing. Rise up to the need and the light of divine providence will shine. There are times where all you have to do is rise up to the infirmity and it disappears. So the word of God is reminding us here that we need to rise, shine, for, the, for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. For behold, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Deep state, deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. I say all of this because I want to let us know some of the things that have already started happening so that you can posture yourself right. The moment you rise because the glory of God is risen upon you, you don't have to advertise yourself. The Bible says Gentiles will come to your light. When Jesus was born, the wise men came from the east. Nobody sent them an email. There were no flyers. Elizabeth and John together with Zechariah did not go to Arabia to tell people da 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 he is about to be born nobody did anything like that I can sing better than that so just delete that from the video but the Bible says they came and when Herod asked them and his magicians how did you even know that a king is born here you guys have come from such a distance they said we saw his light from the east we saw his light from the east because the Bible says when he comes it shall be the sun S-U-N of righteousness and the sun rises out of the east so the moment they saw that star come out of the east they're like this has to be that sun of righteousness that was prophesied so they came they said we saw his star from the east now when we were here on Saturday I was here during worship and the Lord showed me the stone that was preventing someone from breathing and I saw the person was a child. And what did I say? Let us pray for the children because the enemy is inhibiting them from taking in the breath of God, the oxygen of heaven. When I got home and I was looking at our Facebook uh, messages, I saw that this was around maybe 12 midnight. I saw the message had been sent from 8.03 p.m. Someone that we had never met, that we don't know about, just for some reason found us on Facebook, never sent us a message before, not, not any activity. I don't even think they're following communion house. And this person sent a message and says, Pastor, please pray for my child. There's a weight on his chest and he can't breathe. I sent you all a screenshot. You saw the message. This was 8.03 p.m. What time do we do worship here? We started worship like 7. So that must have been about 7.30, 7.40 that the Lord showed that to me. How did this man know? Did we announce and say, hey, the Lord has shown us a vision. Anybody who's having trouble breathing, let them come. No, the Gentiles are waiting. The Bible says that the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, it's a mouthful, but it lets you know, this was God letting us know how important we are in the scheme of things. Not so that we can be full of ourselves, but so that we can be full of him. Because if you know the reason why you're important in the scheme of things is because God wants your light to penetrate the darkness, then you will recognize that this kind of deep darkness takes more than just me. It takes him. It takes his glory. You understand what I mean? And so what do you do? You pray more. You open yourself up to God more. You allow the Holy Spirit to prepare you more. Because the work that is coming will be a lot of work. Because darkness has covered the earth and the people are in deep darkness. We were having a chat over dinner tonight and someone said, I think it was Chris, that it's a good thing that we don't know how terrible things are in the world. Because if people really know how bad things are in the world, many people will just give up. 
You understand what I mean? Because people are in darkness, but it's okay. Because if that, if the darkness were not as deep as it is, many will not appreciate the light that you are. So God has set the stage to show forth his children, to showcase his children. Let me quote that scripture again, that the earnest expectation of creation, all of creation is eagerly, to be eager means to be enthusiastic. They're, they're waiting with a bated breath eagerly awaiting the manifestations of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? The ones who believe. The ones who have been given the power to be called the sons of God. So I want you to be ready for when they come. Because they will come to you. Your neighbors may not even know that you go to church. They may not know that you're born again. Because the last time you attended HOA meeting, you were so angry and complaining about everything. But don't worry, grace and the love of God covers a multitude of sins. The same people who never knew you were born again, when the light begins to shine, they will come seek you out and ask you to pray for them. They will bring their, they will bring their babies to you for you to lay hands on them. And you would be asking them, how did you even know that I can do that? They'd be like, we don't. We just knew that there was something over your house. It happened in the time of Jesus. It's going to happen again. So you don't want to wait until that time before you start praying. Charge your battery now because the load is coming. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to leave you with that for tonight and we're going to break bread. But these other things that I'm, I will say also is this. You see, the Bible says Gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of our shining. Many a times we've been told that one of the signs of the great and final revival is that there will be a transfer of wealth. Thank you. Right? And everybody's like, oh, there's going to be a transfer of wealth. Because later on in the same chapter 60 that we just read, the Bible says that what? That the wealth of the Gentiles will become yours. Now, but if you look in the past, how does the wealth of the Gentiles become yours? The wealth of the Gentiles becomes yours when your light is shining and the power of God is evident in your life. Then the Bible says that the Queen of Sheba will bring all of her wealth. The Caterites, they will bring all of their wealth. All of those people will bring their wealth because kings will come to the brightness of your shining. When the light of Jesus was seen in the east, they didn't come to high five his mom's face. Neither did they bring greeting cards to say congratulations. The Bible says they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They brought the most precious things that existed. And if you ask the Jews, they will tell you for 5,000 years. Well, 5,000 years now, but they will tell you as of the time that Jesus was born. So the Jews are still waiting, right? For the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh to be given to their Messiah. The ones who have yet to accept the Lord Jesus. But the ones who accepted the Lord Jesus when he came were not surprised at the gift because it was already prophesied that when the second Adam is born, he will receive the same gift of the first Adam that was given to him by God from within the Garden of Eden when he lamented for the salvation that he lost and the salvation that he sought. And so when people are just talking about good frankincense and myrrh, a lot of us just think about, you know, they came, he was born at Christmas, they just came to give them Christmas presents. No, it was a fulfillment of all the promises that have been made. It wasn't just a case of expecting the Messiah. It is also a case of expecting the wealth of the kingdom of the Messiah. So the wealth of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth is about to be brought to us, but only to those who are manifesting the power. It's just, a, it's just an incentive, okay? So if you're struggling, go for the power. When the power comes, the wealth will come with it. You understand what I, mean? what I mean? It will come with it. So we're going to break bread with a scripture from the book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 2. Um, I don't even know how, why I closed my Bible so quickly. It's only 9 o'clock and some change. But let's just read Hosea, break bread, and take up the offering and be out of here before John leaves. How is that? God is good. And thank you again, John, for, for that reminder word because we have to hear it again and again. One of the things the Lord's been speaking to me about is that we need to continue to enjoy the ministry of several witnesses. 
The Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter shall be established. So you might hear the same thing from me that you hear from John, that you hear from Alan, that you hear from Josephine, that you hear from Zoe. It might be the same thing. But guess what the Bible says? The Bible says from these multiple witnesses, the seed is allowed to take root. Paul speaking, he says Paul plants, Apollo waters, but God gives the increase. Imagine if Paul planted and Apollos did not come to water. That could have been the terminated arrangement. You understand what I mean? So don't let's be, let none of us be the weak link that allows for the circuit of God's power to be shunted on this earth. We all need to stay active, ready at all times to speak the word and to bear and to bear witness to that which has already been spoken. So Isaiah, I mean Hosea chapter 3, verse 2 says, So I I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and one half omers of barley. And I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be toward you. This was when the Lord said to um, his prophet. Let's read verse 1 because I, I think you're going to get a more rounded understanding before we break bread. He says, Then the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery just like the children of Israel who took to other gods and love the raising cakes of the pagans. He says, So I went and I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and a half omers of barley. Now, I wish I had the time to go into the details, but everything that you're seeing here is a description from heaven's perspective of what Jesus came to do on the cross. We were the ones who were committing adultery before the Lord Jesus came. And he didn't just come and take us back. He paid the price so that it can be justly done. And after having paid the price, he said, okay, you're not going to do that business anymore. You will remain with me and I will remain with you. You see, Jesus is coming back. And he wants to remain with us because he said in the book of Luke, he says, where the bodies are, there the eagles we gather. All right. So all of the casualty that is going to take place on earth is part of the price that needs to be paid to clear and pave the way for our union, for him to be with us and for us to be with him. But what I want to draw from it today is this. The man of God says, I went and I bought her. And after buying her, I made a commitment and I asked her to commit to me also. We need to make a commitment in the times that we're in to do exactly what he said in here to stop playing the harlot. And what does it mean to stop playing the harlot? Every time you have a need, don't go back to the same husband that God has rescued you from. Don't go back to the system of the world. John was saying some people would find a doctor before they find God's face. Whereas what you need is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so God is saying, I don't want you running for help where there is no help. I don't want you settling for what mammon and the system of this world can give. I want you to always come to me. And when you come to me and stay, I will come to you and also stay. Can I quickly share with you one thing that God taught me from this verse of scripture? He said this to me. He said, you know, there are times wherein you profess my word and minutes after you start worrying again. I said, yeah, so you know. He says, yeah, I know, I see you. He said to me, he said, this is what you do. You come to me, but you don't stay. And that is the reason why my peace comes to you, but it doesn't stay. So if you want the peace of God to last in your life, when you come to God, stay right there. If you want his joy to last in your life, when you come to him, stay right there because he paid the price for that joy. But for you to enjoy it, you can only enjoy it together. It can only be enjoyed in a sweet fellowship. Everything that Jesus paid for, he doesn't expect you to go and enjoy it alone. That's why he says, behold, I stand at the door. If you will open the door, I will come and have supper with you. He wants to serve you what he paid for, but he doesn't want you to eat it alone. It's called a sweet fellowship. So this season is the season of staying put in the presence of God. And then you will not lose that peace because you're staying with it and it is staying with you.
So I want to encourage you folks. He is coming. He has paid the price. And we need to stay with him. And how did he pay the price? He paid the price by his blood. His blood was shed. His body was broken. So that you don't have to go elsewhere. God is so faithful that if he truly wants you to go find help elsewhere, he would give you the map. He would send his angels to accompany you there. In fact, himself will wait for you along the way to encourage you. But guess what? He doesn't want you to go elsewhere. That's why he's made provisions for you to come to him and stay with him because he has everything that you need. So today, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm going to address this issue one more time. We talked about it on Saturday. I'm going to talk about it again because I heard it very clearly in my ear right now that they are not taking advantage of the season. The Bible says the race is not to the swift, the battle not to the strong, but time and chance happens to them all. Y'all are not taking advantage of the abundance that God has for you in this season. There are people here still worried about money, still struggling to get money, and the Lord is saying, I have spoken that they need to speak to their situations. So if you're here, and since the word came on Saturday, you haven't spoken to that bank account, you are shortchanging yourself. We're in a season of privilege. It is a privilege for you to have the authority with which to speak. The Lord does not need to scold us in this manner. He's literally begging us to come and enjoy and to come and be at peace. So I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, let us not come back here on Tuesday and be scolded by the Lord for not having spoken to the situations of our lives. We haven't spoken to the stubbornness of that child. We haven't spoken to the absent-mindedness absent of that spouse. This is one of the things that the Lord showed to me, that there are people whose spouses are absent from their lives. You, they're in the same house, but they're not present. Speak to the absentee spouse. Speak to that absence. And say, this man was given to me by God, be present. This woman was given to me by God, be here. These children were given to me by God, be here. Don't be downstairs. And your children are upstairs all through the day, absent from your family life. Speak. To the absence to the to the absence and tell it to go close the gap between you and your loved ones speak to that bank account speak to the laziness of your flesh because some of us we know what to do but we're not getting up and the Bible says he who knows that which he should do but does it not to him it is sin speak to your legs say get up speak to your knees say hit the ground and pray we need to be able to speak and we need to begin to speak. And I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, we will not feel guilty for not having spoken. We're just going to feel energized. We're going to feel encouraged. We're going to feel elevated to pray. You see, all of this rebuke is not so you can feel bad. It's so that you can be activated because your light has come. The Lord is saying, arise. Your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Let us eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood in remembrance of him. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for you, Laura, real quick. And I'm going to tell you what I see real quick. One of the things. You see, you have become accustomed to climbing into your truck. You're so used to it. It's not a bother to you. And the Lord is saying, what if I told you that I have put a step there all this while? But you have gotten accustomed to doing it the hard way. Which is just like, okay, if this is the gap between the ground and my seat, I'm going to just climb it. And the Lord is saying, no, just stay there and watch the step come forth. The Lord is bridging the gap between you and your comfort. And he's saying, the step is there. Just put your foot on it. You see, just like you get into your truck. You know, you're so used to it. And the Lord is saying, no. There is an easier way. There is a provision that I have made. And this step would allow for you to be eased into your comfort. And I pray for you that in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever thing that you have gotten used to doing the difficult way, your heart will repent of and embrace his burden and his yoke. Jesus says, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. He wants, it, he wants you to enjoy it more easily than you are currently. God is specifically calling you into privilege saying take me up on the privilege that I have given you take me up on the promises that I have made you take me up 
It doesn't have to be just a few moments here and there that you find the fullness of that joy. God wants you to swim in it. He wants you to breathe that love, that fullness of joy. He wants you to breathe that peace in all the time. It is your season of great abundance. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why now? And the Lord says, because you have been faithful in little and the Lord will give you much. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Let us eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood. In remembrance of him. Praise the Lord. Alrighty. Praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Matthew, the Lord is stretching the time between now and your next trip. He's stretching it out. He says, I am stretching it out that the basket may be full. So that by the time you get to where you're going, you will immediately need help from others. Okay? So it might seem like the time is short, but the Lord says, I'm going to stretch it out. It will expand even this short time for more to be done on your behalf. You see, he's sending you there as a witness to what he has done. Okay? So just whatever happens between now and then, just know that the hand of God is moving. The hand of God is moving. Uh, Kenyatta, the Lord has opened the door. Okay? And you don't need to be looking at the other doors. You just go into that one. You understand what I mean? Because what I saw as I was speaking over Brother Matthew, I saw you, you're like, okay, I think this might be the door. But you're looking at this one and looking at that one to see, ah, oh, is this what everybody's doing? Is this the door? No, the one that is in front of you, just go right in. You see, the Lord is the one opening that door. You see, because there is speed ahead of you. The moment you step into that room, you will be accelerated. You understand what I mean? You will be accelerated. And there is more, but I just want you to recognize that don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed by options wherein your heart, when your heart in fact, in fact can discern that which is the Lord's. Of all these options, one of them is the Lord's and you're standing in front of it. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be seated one more minute. Um, and I'm going to just do a couple of things real quick. Um, Michelle, I just want to, you know, thank God for you and thank God for your children. You see what I mean? So, because we did certain things, and this is the completion of it. We have prayed, we have supplicated, and now we're giving thanks. Okay? So give thanks simply because everything that you have prayed about, all the supplication, the Lord heard it. The Lord showed me the tears in the middle of the night when you prayed and you cried. And you didn't even care if your face was being messed up. That was your supplication. And the Lord says, now get up and give thanks. You see, because the angels that are bringing the transformation have already departed heaven. You see, so don't worry. Let me tell you something, I see them clear as day. Their garments are like yellowish brown and they have light blue pouches on their waist holding all of what is needed. And I'm told it is a blessing that enables the souls to cross the water. You see, I can tell you a little bit more about that blessing if I'm going to tell you real quick. It's going to enable them. What the angels of the Lord will bring will enable them to cross the water. The waters that have flooded them, that have intimidated them from taking certain actions and trusting certain processes of God. These angels are bringing the blessing that would allow for them to cross the water of intimidation and come to a place of saying, now the Lord has made room and we will be fruitful in the land. Take that word fruitfulness literally because they will be in the land, in the mighty name of Jesus. Alrighty, so again, I know this has been said a few times, but I'm going to just say it again. We're in a season of privilege. Treat every instruction that comes from God in this season as a privilege. When he says go, just know that it's a privilege because some, someone else has not been asked to go, but you've been asked to go. So go forth, treat it as a privilege in the mighty name of Jesus. Alrighty, ah, there was somebody that I had a word for. I'm trying to remember. I saw you before the meeting very clearly. And I came to pull you out of where you're at. And I said to you, this is where they want you to be. Stay here. You know what? If you are here, I'm going to just say this. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. It's not this meeting. Thank you, Jesus. As soon as I said, if you are here, I just remember the meeting that it is. It's a meeting that I've been invited to in February. And so as soon as they sent me that invitation, I was like, oh, I want to get into that meeting. I was yet speaking when I found myself in that meeting. And I saw this lady, but so it's not here. Sorry, I, I was kind of like, can't wait, eagerness. Alrighty, so Alan is going to come to receive the offering. Stay ready, be prepared. Pray always with all manners of prayers. Let me tell you this little secret. You're going to need it in this season. It's the secret of identification. 
and how do you identify what God has for you? It doesn't always look like what you are used to. All right? So like I said earlier on, when you see things that discourage you, pray because they have come to elevate you. When you see people that have been difficult, pray and give thanks because they have come to make you strong. So stop just because if you think like that, you will never complain again, not even for half a day because you will frustrate the heck out of Satan. You know what it means to frustrate? And God expects you to frustrate Satan. The Bible says the Lord confuses the devices of the crafty. He frustrates the token of the enemy. Because when the devil thinks that the things surrounding you should make you sad, and you have figured out a way to turn them around all the time, they're going to leave you alone because it's like, oh, wait a minute, we can't keep throwing this person lemons because now they've got so much lemonade. You see what I mean? And so they will leave you alone. All right? And don't forget, you are the one with the coat of many colors. This is the last thing I promise. When Alan was speaking, this was bubbling in my spirit. You are the guys with the coat of many colors because you are the one that the Lord has made a promise to. Okay? I have told you before, we are Joseph. We are the ones that the Lord has added to himself. When Jesus died, the Bible says, except a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it abides alone, but when it is risen, many more shall be what? Shall be added. We are the ones being added to him. That is the reason why we are the generation that will be caught up to be added with the ones that are already with him in the skies. But there is something about the generation of Joseph. They are the ones that remain. I've told you this before, haven't I? So when Alan was speaking tonight, the Lord said to me, remind them of the significance of the names of the players that I have on the stage. Vladimir Putin has been fighting Vlad, Volodymyr Levinsky or, or, or whatever it's called. Both of them, their names mean the rulers of the world. Vladimir is the same thing as Volodymyr in another dialect. It means ruler of the world. Putin means of the way. Zelensky means of the green you see, or of the money. So basically, we know that there's been a battle between the rulers of the world. You know by their name, right? And now, we have another name that is speaking to us, but many people are not listening. And I'll tell you the reason why you need to listen. The name Joseph Biden, it means the one that remains. The word Biden means to abide, okay? And to be Biden as Joseph, you need to be ready sometimes to live as though you're dead. Because Joseph... When they told his father that they had found him, he says, no, you didn't find my son, for behold, he is dead. There are times wherein it, it, it's as if blessings have forgotten you, people have forgotten you, God has forgotten you, it's okay. Because it is part of what it means to remain, even when there's no reason to. To remain, even when there is no life. Just keep going because of the fact that God will reward your faithfulness and the fact that you abide in the face of difficulty. Even if that abiding means you are below ground, like Joseph was below ground for most of his growing up life, still abide anyway because the Lord will come and he will reward you exceedingly. God bless you. Alan. Come on, let's celebrate the man of God. Hallelujah. As we prepare in our giving, uh, my brother, if you help us with the uh, slide. Thank you so much. We give God praise for uh, this word tonight, how he's dealt with us. And that reminder to speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> Father, we give you praise. Thank you so much. The Lord deals with us beautifully. He has mercy on us. The given details are on the screen. If you need an envelope, you'll see it right there at the uh, made new sign. We'll wait just a couple of seconds. We'll lift this up and we will be on our way. Father, we give you praise for we know the earth is yours in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Father, we thank you for how you have seen upon us, looked upon us this evening, O oh God, and ministered to us through the ones that you set before us. Father, we thank you for this season of abundance, of privilege that you have brought us into. Lord, we ask of thee as you have given us these things, O oh God, let our giving back unto you be pleasing, O oh God. 
let it be sweet smelling unto you. Lord, we thank you for this power that you have granted unto us, O oh God, to implement your kingdom here in the earth. And Lord, even as we have been encouraged to speak to our situations, Lord, we, in the name of the Jesus, call forth those ones that are supposed to be in our midst, O oh God, that are supposed to be receiving, O oh God, from this place, that are supposed to be being empowered by the word that comes forth here, O oh God, experiencing your tangible presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that you have indeed given seed to the sower. We say that all glory and honor belong to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget, we'll be praying tomorrow night, Wednesday on Instagram. Join us. We're going to tap in, press in. It's been glorious every week. And we'll be back this Saturday, 630. Y'all have a blessed night and we'll see y'all soon.